And we're back. Good lead in. <laughs> yeah, hi everybody. It's Mark Torres with Inside Foos and Keith Glenn. Glad to be here, Mark. <laughs> we are. Uh, we've been doing this for hours now, and it's been amazing. We are remotely covering the 2021 Lee and Hart World Championships from Saint Bendel, Germany, and it's an incredible experience to see this world class foosball happening overseas and be we're in we're actually in lexington kentucky at the tornado world championships and we're going to be talking about incredible foosball action happening in germany we've been doing it for hours now and keith just joined us yes. keith what, what are you thinking man how's how's your experience been so far uh it's been very cool uh, i mentioned when i was talking with miriam earlier this is i've only been playing for about a year and a half less than two years so none of these events happened last year obviously so it's my first chance to get to look at the Lee and Hart World Championships, the Tornado Championships here this weekend. Very cool event. I know they have 500 plus players that they would have had more based on restrictions, but we're expecting a 600 plus person crowd here. Just really cool to get to see everybody back out, enthusiastic, itching to play some foos, and really making a point of getting out there. Uh, we just saw some classic doubles action over from the Lee and Hart Championships, and just really cool to be a part and get to watch two different but similar styles of play all in the same weekend. Yeah, it looks like we have a big match coming up. Yannick Correa, who lives in Luxembourg from Portugal, living in, or part Portuguese in Luxembourg, world-class player, multi-table singles champion at the World Cup. Uh, and his partner, Alexander Bello, who I'm not familiar with, but I'm sure if he's playing with Yannick, he's got skills. We have watched Jorg Harms and Marvin Velasco. And this may be the finals or the semifinals. I'd have to look at it. Yep, I see you, Kusov. And they are trying to get that cleaned up. They're fixing that. Um, our, our Twitch stream is live as they uh, as they put together the stream. The stream uh, internet went down over there, and they're putting it all back together. So you're, you're seeing them. Their Twitch stream is probably turned off while they're doing the technical management. Uh, you get to see troubleshooting live and maybe this looks like it's it looks like we're we're good to go back um i wonder if this is on our end if there's that yeah we should be able to speaking of technical difficulties um, no, no that's not our video i don't know how I, uh it's not getting piped into our discord here we'll but... watch it there might be a little bit of a yeah, delay like you, yes. until they um add it it's too bad Marion left because yeah. sure they <laughs> figure this out for us but We'll do the best we can here. We do have access to the to the video here. So uh, I think she had just said that we would have seen a quarterfinal match. So this might be the quarterfinal match on the other side. And this uh, would be a, either quarterfinal match or semifinal match. Yeah, it might be the semifinal match because I think we saw Jorg and Marvin win their quarterfinal match. Now let's go back. Classic doubles. What classic doubles is, it's a novelty event. There's a modern shot really uh, took prominence in the 90s. It's called the rollover shot, and it's done. It's, it's a unique type of shooting style where you shoot with your wrist as opposed to your hand. The ball's pinned. That is a modern shot as kind of an homage to before the shot came into existence. They have something called classic doubles, 
and it brings back um, more uh, traditional styles of shooting, like push kicks and pull kicks and pull shots and push shots. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit more as we start to watch the match here. But classic doubles, you cannot shoot the modern rollover shot. That was what makes it a novelty event. So it takes that shot out, and you get to see some types of shooting that you don't traditionally like to see or tra traditionally have the opportunity to see. And we uh, have had, had great fun watching this event. It's funny. That was a good... Um a little bit of a misspeak there, but it's probably accurate. There's plenty of players specifically here in the United States that would like to see less of the rollover. Uh, a lot of it's, it sounds silly to just say this one shot revolutionized the game, but it did. It's so prevalent here. It is clearly the predominant shot. Newer players coming on. It's the first thing they learn and it really did change the game. So to go back to these classic events, interesting to see how maybe it'll look into the past and through the looking glass and uh, kind of see what the game was like 30 years ago. Yeah, and it's the most it's the most um, popular shot in the world. The rollover yeah. slang snake shot. Yeah, you'll hear it's it called the most the popular snake. shot in the world. So it's, it's um, we would we'll see a ton of it at this tournament and at we're we're in Lexington, Kentucky at the Tornado Championships. You'll see a ton of that shot here. This is kind of a fun novelty event. It doesn't have that shot. Oh, look, there's instant replay on Yannick Corriere throwing the rod. <laughs> a little instant replay of him throwing the rod. So, yeah, still warming up here as we get ready for this match. And uh, the one the one shot you won't see as much in Classic here in the States, but you will definitely see uh, here in this Leonhardt footage is the the Euro pin, the pin shot. Uh, there is, you are not, a, there's a big part of that when it does get shot in the modern era, which is you're able to, you flip the rod over, you let it go, what would look like a spin to the untrained eye, but it is not legally a spin. So it's a legal shot, but you are not allowed to do that under classic rules. So when these guys shoot that pin shot, they're not allowed to flip over and hit it straight. A major part of the, the modern Europe. So interesting to see. In my understanding, the, this when the snake shot came around, it wasn't a change in rules that allowed it. The rule was always the same, but the ball, you're not allowed to, the toe of the man isn't allowed to go 360 degrees yeah. before or after hitting the ball. So when you roll over and hit the ball, you get a, it goes 340 degrees, but then you get a fresh 360. So that way, my understanding is it wasn't a rule change necessarily that allowed that. It was just someone figured out, wait, hey, I can do this. And well, I was here. I was playing foosball during the entire time. And although there were discussions, it was really Charles McIntosh and some other master foosers. There was Charles McIntosh made the decision because the discussion was, should we make it illegal? And there was a lot of discussion about, should we change the rules to make it illegal? Some people felt like in the spirit of the rule, it was legal because the man never fully spun. And people were shooting other things where they take the rod in a pull shot and flip the rod over and grab it before it's spun, which is a version of that. And uh, there was a, a, there was a school of thought that felt like it was going to grow the game because people were learning it. They made it easy to um, have offense sooner and quicker. There was a school of players that thought you don't really put the time in and you don't put the discipline and effort into developing your um, other skill sets. And the, the, the school that went out was the school that felt like it's growing the game. People are shooting it. People are learning it. So they decided when there was a time when it could have been made illegal and they decided not to make it illegal. What it absolutely did, because the first person to really propel the shot and win championships was Terry Moore. He was a left-handed player with a very dominant five bar. But his pull shot was very weak. And the one thing the rollover can be credited for is elevating left-handed players to have some equivalency, if not even superiority, because now they have the left-handed skill and natural acumen to pass the ball, and now they had a, a, a offensive threat on the three bar that didn't require a lot more exercise than co conventional right-handed players. We had to work very hard. Left-handed players had to work very hard to be competitive on the three bar. By the way, we were, we're referring to three bar. We're really talking about the forward area, the midfield area, the defender area, as we draw these uh, relationships to soccer. And so um, the left-handed player became very, very controlling, if not dominant. 
Yeah, I definitely think it helped grow the sport. I've seen it argued that it chases new players off because they see it and they, you know, they get teed off on. So they don't want to come back, but it also makes it easier to advance quickly. We got a great question here from Kuzov. Thank you, Kuzov, for being engaging in the chat. Question: the, the remark is, I've heard that pin shooters are refrain are retraining to switch to rollovers. Somebody told me that nowadays pin shots are considered not as effective as snakes or something like this. Is that true? Well, I will say this: the most dominant foozer of all time is Frederico Colignon. This is a gentleman who's won every single major event on every single table. And one year, I understand it, he won every tournament. Every tournament. So imagine being a tennis pro and not just winning the Grand Slams, but winning every single tournament. Um, the most dumb, he shot a year open. He did not shoot a rollover. So, so um, the rollover has so many advantages. The advantages are endurance is a huge one because you're not using your wrist. You're actually flipping and there's a lot less tension and strain on your wrist. So you have an endurance advantage. And then the velocity you can create with the rollover, frankly, gives you a better percentage of rebound and a better percentage of slop. You increase your luck factor as opposed to a pull shot. Because you can create, when you generate that much velocity by flipping the rod over, there's incredible advantages. So it would make sense that conventional pin shooters would, it makes sense anybody, pull shooter, push shooter, tic-tac, anything, push kick, pull kick, it makes sense in that regard for anybody to retrain the rollover. I would say that though, if you're an expert pin shooter of any type, there's a learning curve. And I think there's a diminishing return. As much investment as you might put in to learning how to shoot a rollover, you might take you a year before you get equivalency in your scoring percentage. So there's pros and cons. I don't know if it's necessarily generally true that pin shooters are retraining to switch to rollovers, but I think it makes sense that you see a lot of it because of the advantages I described. I think we got going here. Here we go. We're getting going. Match is underway. It's one nothing in favor of the team on the left. Yeah, I, I think that's interesting, and I, I definitely, I don't know that pin shooters, like established pin shooters, someone who's been doing it for 20, 30 years, may not necessarily be switching to the rollover, but if you were maybe beginning, you know, you've only been doing it for a few years or so, the, uh, the like you see, you brought up Frederic, Frederico Cognon, who is the best player of all time. He shot the Euro pin, and he did it on every table he played on, multi-table Best multiplayer table of all time. He did it. No one else did it. No one else has done it since. No one else has been able to emulate that. So I think, you know, and at least for the Leonhardt uh, World Series, I don't know much about their player base, but here for the Tornado Championship Series, all the guys that finish top five in open singles will be shooting a rollover. Uh, and maybe even a little deeper than that. And it sounds like Leonhardt, is, the rollover is very popular there too. So, I, you know, you we'll see. You heard Keith Glenn say it. I'm going to hold him to it. He doesn't think Tom Yor or Tracy McMillan or he doesn't think any of these. Uh, he doesn't think Todd Lafredo. Okay, isn't Todd Lafredo the favorite of full shooter? To... I, don't, I don't think he uh, – Keith Glenn doesn't think any of these guys are going to get in the top five. Oh, we got a, a cool instant replay here. Let's see what Yannick does here. He's serving the defense. York, who's a great defender. Uh, just straight. Yeah, just, just went straight. And uh, that was the cool thing, though, the classic here, Marion and I kind of touched on this. We haven't seen anything but a pin shot. So definitely still more prevalent on the different tables. But here in the United States, you might see one or two pin shooters. These guys are seemingly exclusively shooting pin shots in the classic event. Oh, they're probably shooting rollovers when we get into the non-classic. Yeah, I'm sure they'll all be shooting rollovers. We saw um, Max Hoyer earlier shooting a moving pull shot and a pull shot with great effectiveness. He lost the match. It was against Jorg and uh, Marvin, actually. But Jorg is the coach of the German national team. He's a, he's got a great push series back there and um, a real smart player. We've seen him do things uh, during the course of a match, master level stuff in terms of um, figuring out a defense that he was going to get a block with in a, in a clutch situation. Yannick is not someone to be toyed with. Yannick is a world-class uh, multi-time, multi-table singles champion at the World Cup. And, uh, and and Marvin is an up and coming young talent for York to be playing with him is kind of a testament to his skill set. So uh, we get a great look here at Marvin and York. Marvin in a classic Euro pin set, dancing the ball around looking for the opening. And it looks like he went both sides. He shot a quick shot and uh, recovered. Maybe we should. Um... What's that? 
Yeah, interesting thing there. You see, uh, you saw York doing the the back pin from his uh, defensive area there. As uh, we've been talking about the Euro pin, that's generally out of the front pin position. He put a good back pin shot on goal to the near side. And uh, cool as we make some adjustments here. Perfect. Yeah, Mark talking about the dominance of Yannick and uh, Alexander there on the left and seeing that early as they were up 2 nothing here in this first game. That's uh, a cool little alternative. They have it in a pinch shot and hit it with the furthest man. Now we have Marvin in the forward position surveying the defense. And good. that's a hey, – let's watch the replay. If we get the replay on that – I think it was a. I think he, we saw Marvin shoot some crazy angle shots. There's some discussion here on whether or not that went in. I think uh, it definitely did, from my perspective. Oh no, they're gonna. Or no, oh because this resets to the goalie. Well, when yeah, in classic after you score, it goes to the right. Game, you have to work all the way down the table. I like that. The fact that you have you're not just able to kind of pass and go. Well, you know, rod. it's great if the opposing goalie can't clear. It's just ex just like exactly what happened. It's extra possessions for the forward. True, it, but it does. It challenges. It, so the better goalies will, you know, it keeps it uh, kind of more competitive in the sense that you're not going to have somebody get lucky. Right? Another good walking push. Uh, that was beautiful ball control. That's not easy to do. A... I'm trying to see which where we're referring to this if it's not deleted here. Okay, it's synced. Yeah. Do you mind if I put this here? Is that cool? It's a little better. So it doesn't look like we're just staring down. <laughs> yeah, we uh our our we got a couple different monitors up here. So we're just It's like mission control stuff. up here. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> um, like all these moving parts. But. So Alexander with the ball, and then uh, so we talked about fundamentals of play and a responsibility for a goalie is not necessarily to score. Scoring, scoring is icing on the cake. The real job for a goalie is to get it across the table. Now that's great. He did both. Got across the table and it scored. Right on cue. Right on cue. But if you're getting the ball across the table, and you're making blocks, <laughs> and you're you're making blocks. And um, recovering the ball when it comes into your area. So when it comes into the defender area, you keep it in your area and do not give your opponent a uh, op second opportunity. So how we have Marvin now in his midfield area, past the forward area, and now in his Euro pin set. I love watching Euro pin shooters block the ball like that. It looks like it's rolling back and forth, but they have control the entire time. Look at that smooth delivery to the near side. Yeah, pulls it and hits it. Gorgeous. And yet, yeah, speaking about the goalie responsibility, that is a huge part. If you're an up-and-coming or aspiring to become a competitive foosball player, you're probably going to start in back. Uh, it requires not less skill, but a good goalie controls the pace of the game, and that's where the ball, you know, the opposing team is trying to get the ball in the back of that goal. So you're the gatekeeper. Looks like down 4 2. Did they have a switch where Yannick went to the goalie area? Because Yannick is oh, not. They did, yeah. Yep. Switch on the left. So that was a huge momentum swing. Uh, Yannick and Alexander DeBello were up 2 nothing, and now four in a row for Jorg and Marvin. So massive momentum swing, and they're going to call a timeout. And talking about table management, you got a young player here in uh, Marvin Velasco, and he that was wise. That's something that might be hard, difficult to forget when you get in the heat of a quarterfinal or semifinal match like this. Yeah, they might be out of frame a little bit. Make sure you get the frame. Oh. Oh. Getting comfortable here. Yeah. Getting a little cozy. Making, making sure everybody can see us instead <laughs> of just hear us. But some, some intimate social distancing. Yes, right. <laughs> Keep... <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we, we take our precautions to make sure we don't catch each other's cooties, but if <laughs> it's going to happen, it's going to happen. We're going to be on top of each other all weekend. <laughs> Whoa. Um, so anyway, we got um, we we've been watching had the opportunity to watch Marvin and York play a couple of matches, and they had some struggles. They played against Max Hoyer and partner. Forgive me for not remembering. Is it was it Mick? Was it Ma Max and Mick? And they were down in the third game, three to zero. Came back, put it together, and we talked about 
in tournament style play where you don't want to peak right away. You want to build up to a crescendo and hopefully you're peaking. You're peaking right when it matters. And uh, we, um, Jorg and Marvin may be playing their best foosball right now. Every match they put a little bit more together. They build, they build, they build, play a little bit better. Playing really good foosball right now. Coming coming down from uh, coming back from down 2-0 to make it 4-2. They could carry this momentum and peak in a final match. We saw York use that pin on so the near man. He pins the ball in that defender position and looks for a hole and gets the ball across the table. So it converts. Beautiful, beautiful team play as they take that first match there so folks i'm just realizing i think we might be on a bit of a delay so what we're our commentary is a couple sec this is on a delay but this is linked up with this video so yeah but this is ahead right so this is ahead so we should be this if we're looking at this this is good this is behind right no see watch i'm gonna do this and it's not gonna show up here even though this is the what we're commenting on it's not gonna show up there until You yeah, know what I'm yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think as long as we're um, as long as we're speaking to this one here, we're okay. Yes. Wait. So I said that minutes ago. We would be saying, "Hey, these guys are getting." Sorry. Anyway, so if it seems like we're on delay, I think that might be why. Uh, we gotta get this. We need. This yeah, we need so. it here. Yeah. Is what I'm saying because this is we're on a delay with the feed. Hey, so we're we're just getting our stuff together <laughs> as we get the feedback from Germany. And yes. it may feel like you're where there's a time warp here. Yes. But it's exciting to be to be telling you what's happened in the past because everybody wants to know what's happened in the past. Yeah. So I'm going to send a quick message. Let's do this here. Yeah. yeah sorry. So, brother, folks, and, and, you know we're having fun here, and the whole point of this is to enjoy ourselves. So I just realized that uh, that we are, for obviously professional reasons, on a little bit of a delay with what's going live on Twitch uh, because our raw footage. We're having troubles getting we were watching the twitch stream live and i realized we're watching it on the delay responding to it so everything you were hearing was probably a couple seconds behind couple so seconds maybe 30. yeah <laughs> is it a 30 second delay is that what we're on yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, that would be really bad like <laughs> uh the second game is over and we're commenting about the the first ball being played but, <laughs> yeah um, and obviously you know this is a new thing for us to be able to do this globally and be able to do it remotely so for foosball it's never been done yeah we're covering the tournament five thousand miles away and it's exciting to be the first to do it and you're with us in these pioneering events as we figure out what we're doing <laughs> so thank you for bearing with us and you get to be one of those people that says i watched that first stream i remember those days as we perfect our craft here oh we're getting this figured out i have to say I just got my official inside football. Nice. This is a sharp look, man. We look good. And uh, I'm very happy to be upgraded for my staff t-shirt. Uh, they may have just forgotten to give us that back on uh, our server here. Man, you guys have been at this for four hours already. Four hours? Are you kidding me? Long, a lot longer than that. Oh, sorry. I must have had to reboot the stream. But oh, yeah, yeah. you started what nine a.m. today? Uh, maybe it's, let me see. Maybe four hours. Let me make sure. So more like a ten. No, maybe five. Yeah. No, no, maybe. It's a blur. It's been a long time. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it been goes great. by quick. I did. I did like thirteen hours or fourteen hours of live commentary. I mean I wasn't live the whole time obviously, but uh when I covered the smashdown in upstate New York and I didn't even realize all of a sudden it got dark and then all of a sudden it was two AM and I had started at eleven o'clock that morning or whatever time. It goes by quick when you're having fun watching foos. So uh, So in general terms we could talk about foosball because it's fun to do so if you're just joining us my name is Mark Torres with Inside Foos. This is Keith Glenn with Inside Foos. Yes. We were in Lexington, Kentucky at the Tornado Championships remotely watching and commentating on the Leonhardt World Championships, which is in St. Wendel, Germany. And it's an amazing time to have in all this foosball action, the best table and the best players from Europe and the United States happening. We'll go from this tournament to the tournament down the hall. We're learning about foosball and talking to you about 
things that may be new to you about the game. We're seeing some of the best players in the world as we do that. The fundamentals of the game, um, how these, what's going on in their heads. These players are incredibly cerebral. They're beyond the point where they're just worried about simple execution. Early on, when you're a beginner in table soccer and you play tournaments, you're just trying to put the ball in the right spot and uh, you know get your pass it to your man and do it, do that bit of execution. These guys are forward thinking. They're playing a game within a game. They're trying to understand the previous possession and how it relates to these possessions and forwarding thinking. How am I going to make an adjustment? How am I going to um, save something and use it later? What is, um, you know, what's the right choice? All these, these coin flipping ideas on, hey, I've gone this place twice or three times. Is he going to jump out of the way this time? What's he looking for? And what are the options? There's so much mental stress going on in the decision making in this sport that's played in millimeters of space. It's really exciting stuff when you get into the detail of what's happening on the table. Yeah, definitely very cool. You know, we refer to it as the chess match that gets played and to tell maybe a novice or somebody who the layman, so to speak, uh, who knows what foosball is, but doesn't understand kind of the professional play. It's not just whacking the ball around a table. It's not even just passing, catching, and shooting, which is something that's probably not familiar to laymen, everyday bar players, people who played, you know, as kids in the rec room. But it's shooting with purpose. Uh, you, like you said, okay, I just tried this. Now let me try that again. Or now I got to go somewhere else. Or, you know, what they just did this twice. Where are they going to go now? And then that whole mindset that gets into it, 